Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the VR League, hosted here from our Cologne studios and brought to you guys by Intel. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, for the Echo Arena Oculus Connect 5 qualifiers. And joining me here today for the action in both Europe and North America is going to be Jason Kaplan. How are you doing today? I'm doing, uh, I'm doing B. You know, today was one of those days I woke up and I was just deciding... I need to not have a good day. I need to have a me day. You know, I need a to just day. do me. Just do me. So okay. it turned out to be a good day, actually. So funny enough, yeah. I'm doing good. How about you? Doing, doing pretty no, good. You always ask me. I never ask you. Can't complain, to be honest. Right. Can't complain. It's been, uh, it's been a decent day. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, we've got a lot of action coming up for the day, ladies and gentlemen. So be sure to stick around. Today's going to be a much longer stream than we are normally used to. Before we get into too much of the details, though, we do want to talk a little bit about what the VR League actually is. You want to explain that for the folks at home? Sure, I'd love to. Uh, the VR League is like a culmination of multiple games that you can play uh, in virtual reality. We have Sprint Vector as one of them. We have, obviously, Echo Arena, which we'll be doing today. And there's also the VR Master League, which is kind of like a subset of this, more community-driven, that has Onward, it has Pavlov, it has Beat Saber. I'm pretty sure Super Hot will be in there one day. Just kidding, it won't be in there. Um, but it has tons of games, and you can obviously participate in those as the, uh, the weeks do go by. But we're pretty much coming into the culmination of the entire VR League. We've been doing this for the last, what, two, two three months, pretty much? And we're finally at the, the peak point for Echo Arena because Oculus Connect 5 is literally around the corner. Yeah, very much so. It's just over a month away now, I would say, at this point. It's going to be at the end of September 26th to the 27th, maybe one day off on that oh, you're one. Good, you're good. Yeah. You're good. 26th confident. to the 27th of September is when we're going to be having that action going on. And the prize pool, of course, that's going to be up for grabs is going to be quite large. We could take a look at that in just a moment, see what exactly is going to be up for grabs for those players that do manage to make it all the way to the main event. It's going to be quite a lot of cash yeah, flow. 18,000 18, bucks on the line for first place and 10,000 for second. Didn't yeah, of course, because I see that money and I'm like, how can we whittle <laughs> this down further so potentially we can get more of it or any of it? Um, but no, we're not good enough to actually place in any of those. But yeah, you saw 18 grand for first place. That's a lot of money on the line for these teams. Not to mention they've been accumulating money over the entire season throughout all the stage finals, throughout the weekly, uh, the weekly cups. So a lot of extra pocket change on the line and we're going to see if someone can take down the champions of Eclipse. All right. And we're going to find out more about that. And we'll probably see Eclipse play out a little bit today as well. We can take a look at our brackets. We'll see which region we have up on the board there first. That'll be our North American region. Do note that we're going to be showing these matches a little bit later on today as we're going to be covering Europe first. Uh, but taking a look at this bracket, uh, how do things look here for you? Any surprises Eclipse that wins. potentially come out? Of, yeah, no, I Eclipse mean. Wins. I'm sorry. Eclipse wins. <laughs> That's the way I was going to take it, it too. Eclipse. Uh, I think the, the biggest challenge is going to be the second place, obviously. And we saw... Uh, Omegators, not Om Omegators. Megators, I think, is, was what we classified them as. Uh, we saw them play, obviously, at the June Invitational. Uh, we saw Metamarks there as well. But 11.5 were generally the stronger team, though Metamarks did, I think, come back and beat them in the lower bracket. I think it's going to come down that second place battle. And I think it's between those two teams, Metamarks 11.5, to see who will be the second team from NA to get through to the regionals or to the, to the finals. Very true. And we can take a look at our European brackets as well here in just a couple of moments, guys, to see the action that we're going to be showing off here today. For Before we do get to the okay. European brackets, just for everyone at home, because obviously for us to do all of EU and all of NA, it's going to take a hell of a long time. So NA technically does start before we get to them. So we'll miss out on a couple of matches, but we will tune into them as soon as we possibly can when we're done with Europe. Yeah. Just give people at home a heads up. So we will potentially miss out on some matches there. So we're focusing on our Europe coverage here today. But like you said, as soon as that finishes, and I believe uh, we'll wait for a correction to see if I'm wrong, but I believe we'll be skipping the European finals of this since everything will have been basically played out at that point. And we'll have our two qualified teams once we get up to that point. Uh, like I said, we're just going to skip the finals and start covering the North American matches. But now we should be able to take a look at that European bracket. Okay, well, we okay. can take a look at it on our screens. Uh, luckily for us, we have them, these lovely... Acer monitors in front of us. Um, well, we have Team Gravity up against Smash Dash as, a, as the top half of the bracket. We have European Backlash versus Team Flux. Nailed it. There it is perfectly. Oh, we're going to my screen where I could actually have the stream on, so we should maybe mute, mute the audio really quickly. Um, I'll mute the audio as I'm lurking in there. There we go. Nailed it. All right. So there you see. I did not expect to go to my screen on this one. Uh, team Gravity up against Smash Dash in the top half of the quarterfinal. Backlash versus Team Flux, which will be, I believe, the first game we're covering today. Blast versus Gamma and Team I can't Telepathy, there we go. I had to hover over because it's Telly up against Aftershock as another matchup in the quarterfinals. And of course, it's just the two teams to come through and we'll be covering, from what I understood, 
the one of the quarterfinals will be covering the then two loser bracket games. Then we'll go to the upper final, then a lower final, and then that will be it for EU. Yeah. So taking a look at this bracket, though, who's who's your picks? Who's your picks for first and second place? Looking at, at today, <sighs> I mean, it's a bit hard to tell because we did have uh, a, a big series of roster shakeups right, over the Blast past two weeks. Was like the team to go to. They were the team who almost beat Eclipse in the regionals, but now with Terra no longer on the team, it kind of leads me to believe. Will they still be as good as they were before? I think in general they are. Uh, Boop and Lone Gecko, strong pairing, super aggressive, and teams are going to have a hard time dealing with it. I think Gravity is, though, is the team to watch out for now with Avatar going over to that team because he he was hands down the best goal that we saw in the regional. I'll, I'll say it without a doubt in my mind. He blocked so many shots where he shouldn't have. He had even a Hail Mary of a throw 64 meters out. It was insane to actually put them within striking distance to come back against Eclipse in the last game. Those are the two teams for me, Blast and Gravity. I think if anything, Aftershock might pull up an upset, upset against them in the lower bracket, um, but those are the two teams I see. It was hard to judge Blast uh, given their performance coming out of the Stage 3 finals that we had playing out last Sunday, simply because I think they had another fill-in as well, and that was also impacting their performance. Some lag issues were there as well, so it's a bit hard to get a picture about where they're sitting right now. And we're going to hope that they could bounce back for this qualifier. However, for me personally, based on just that performance and obviously with the caveats added into it, uh, I feel like Aftershock might take the edge over them. We might actually see Blast bumped out of the top two into third place, so it's it's going to be... I think, it's, I think you're right, though. I think it's going to be a battle between those two teams primarily for second place, with uh, Team Gravity being the front runner in first. I don't want to go like too much into it because obviously we want to get started with the games, but I think Blast were like the team who was the quickest in movement. When we saw Boop and Lone Gecko attack at the, in the, uh, the Invitational, they would attack so fast and they would get back before they could even get the disc onto um, the other side of the actual arena. So they're very fast, they're very mobile, and they're super aggressive. I just wonder for the goalie on the team if he can fill that role that Aventura played for them because he was kind of the quarterback for them. He was kind of like, I think, I think personally, at the mind of the team. Um, and he has to go big when it comes to the disc getting back because if Boop and Lone Gecko ever miss a regrab coming back to their side of the arena, then there's most likely going to be a goal happening. Well, guys, our first match for today, starting off on the bracket, is going to be Backlash taking on Team Flux. So two of our teams that qualified, if I remember correctly, from the stage uh, stage two or three. I think stage three is where most of these teams managed to work their way in. They're the five and six positions for seeding. So we're going to see them clash initially. Same rules as the stage finals, by the way. It's a double elimination bracket, meaning a loss here in the first round is not going to lead to your elimination. But if you lose again after that in the lower bracket, you are knocked out of the running, and you will not be able to claim one of those two spots for your region in oh, first place. And it looks like, we, yeah, we are just about ready to get started. So let's dive into it. Backlash going up against Team Flux. The first round of OC5 qualification here in the second season of the VR League for Europe in Echo Arena. All right, so off the bat, Backlash on the red, or on the red side, the orange side, as we have <laughs> Benzula, Sundance, you might recognize him, and Torn up against Team Flux with Sinister, Nilevic, and Mr. Scottish Guy. I recognize Nilevic every time I see his name, just for the fact he's break, broken his wrist twice playing, funny enough, and hopefully not a third time for him. But speaking of the man and speaking of the team, at least, Team Flux opens things up with a nice three-pointer. It was going to be any day. It would be today where we would see him have to fight the hardest, I would think, especially in the position that they're in, whether or not one of those like top three contending teams in the region at the moment. So we'll have to see how this plays out for himself and the rest of his team, Flux, that is, as we get further into this game. But already about 20 seconds taken off the clock of the first goal scored, and it's a three-pointer. Not a bad start at all for Team Flux. Let's see if they can keep the momentum up. As we now have Backlash starting with the disc on their side of the arena, picking things up. It's going to be Sundance. Actually goes for a very aggressive pass over to Benzula. And he's actually lost control of it. They're trying to re-grab back in here to get in time. Number 21 is going to be free Sinister. Oof. And again, another three points on the board. And Blue, this is something we kind of talked about, uh, about Ekarina. That's a lot different than like other traditional esports is that in, in other traditional esports, when you have one team be way better than the other, games are over quick because of how it works, because of like them being able to win on the win condition. But actually, funny enough, in Ekarina, it's the opposite way around. The better the teams are, the the quicker the game is, because obviously there's a lot of time when you score to talk things over. Like for Backlash, this gives them a great opportunity to figure out like what they did right, what they did wrong the last round, what they can adapt and do differently for, you know, moving forward. Um, but they really have to start to think of things quickly because Six points in the first 40 seconds is not a good sign. A lot of interrupted momentum, I think, contributes to why the games are so much quicker because we don't see teams leading up to goals uh, so so much more quickly. Like we had seen here already twice from Team Flux. Backlash tries to run a bit of a gauntlet themselves with a pass going from T-Sundance over to Torin. 
Torin passes it right back downstairs over to Banzula, who's going to try to send it up, but it bounces off of one of the islands, loosening it. His other teammate comes in, stops his opponent on flux from being able to pick it back up. Sundance will be the one to retrieve it. Another pass over to Torin. Torin will have his intercepted, however, as it's slapped out of the way, and Flux can now pick it up in the hands of Cyanister. They send it back through mid, and all of a sudden, the pressure's back on for Backlash. They're going to have to race their own goal. Oh, the shot comes in from below. Unfortunately, going to miss out on this one, but actually, for some reason, Cyanister passes backwards. To a teammate. Looks like Mr. Scottish guy's trying to retrieve the disc. The problem is the regrabs. Are they going to be there for backlash? They have a perfect opportunity to make an easy goal here. They're going to pick it up and go for the score. Ooh. And they will get only two points on the board, but a goal nonetheless. Absolutely. And Cyanister actually touches it a little bit there just before it goes in, which is why it's contributed as an own goal, even though obviously couldn't do much to stop it. Just a matter of momentum at that point. Couldn't reach his arm back quickly enough. So we do I see. I wonder, by the way, Blue. What's up? If someone throws it from the three point bubble, and then a defender like hits the disc. So technically if they're scoring their own goal, it'll change to a two point. Yeah, it does. So that I actually could not tell if that was a potential three pointer that they actually blocked to only make two. I think that one was inside of the bubble already, okay. but we have seen examples in the past where people have owned gold just to bring it down to a two pointer. Okay. I think that, I think that works the way we'll leave our, our experts from the community in the chat to, uh, to, to make fun clarify that, but I'm knowing. pretty sure it works that way. <laughs> oh, here we go. Backlash again. Of the attempt on an attack here. Sundance is able to carry it up that far hand side. Just got to be careful of Navik though, trying to get aggressive with those use of the islands to actually get around very quickly. Shot comes in potentially out of Torn. But look how much time just being taken off the, the clock here just by this defensive flux, not giving them an easy angle for a shot. Mr. Scottish guy will be the one to send it back a little bit, but unfortunately he's not able to get it out of the hands really of Backlash. They immediately pick it back up. Sundance is waiting for a pass opportunity to open it back up. Sends it further down the field a little bit over to Torin. Torin's going to make more momentum forward. Banzula now picks it up and he just slams it right into the goal to score another two-pointer here for Backlash now. Slowly closing the gap, but they are still at least one more goal away from being able to take the lead here. Proud of you, Blue. What? You're learning sports. Am I? Yeah. Yeah. Slammed it in. That was good. That was good. He slammed it. He did slam it in. You know, that good old three-point slam dunk. Yeah. As you uh, mentioned. That's 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 old blue. Feels like a, it's old blue. That's one month ago, blue. <laughs> You've changed so much in yeah. this month. Four two months. Colognes changed but... you. <laughs> here we go. Back into the next volley here for Team Flux as they're gonna have the disc on their side. Initial start with Mr. Scottish guy does get the pass off to Nalvik. Again, passes off, but he actually fluffs the pass here. Sundance has an opportunity to pick up the disc. He does get it. And now they have control yet again. Team Flux up six to zero in the first 40 seconds are now looking at potentially having things tied up. Torn as well moving down. It's gonna get retrieved now by Sundance. Sundance with another pass sends things over to Banzula. An additional pass to Torn as he's now closing inside of the three point zone. It'll be one more pass over to Sundance. He finally secures it. And some great, I'll say amazing even, pass work coming in here from Backlash is allowing them to swoop through the defenses of Flux. Like three times in a row, it would seem. Uh, over, like that overhand vol uh, throw, whatever. I, I, I know I had this exact same problem last time we, I tried to talk about it. I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember the term what, in basketball when you do this with the ball. Over your over your body, it's like the overarm. I don't know. Anyways, no, no. great shot. <laughs> Let's just keep it at that. <laughs> Let's keep these sports terms out of it because clearly I'm just not prepared to be able to say them correctly. And again, Sundance on the defense, he gets the interception, sports reference, and he passes it off to Torin. More of a general term at this point. But either way, it does get taken by Backlash once again. Additional pass to Sundance. Doesn't have anyone open right now. He's going to take it over to Banzula, who picks it up for a moment, but he wasn't necessarily, like I said, in the clear there. So it gets pretty easily stolen back away from him. He thankfully sends it back in time, but Backlash aren't able to really keep possession besides that. Flux are able to knock it out of their hands. Sundance, however, has now got it back. Goes for the short pass to Banzula. He'll send it to Torn, but Torn didn't look like he was entirely ready for that. So it is going to be loose since Cyanister quickly picks it up. A jump to give him some some additional distance as well and he's given the room he needs to release the disc and send it flying and oh no we can see Banzola was immediately punched out after he arrived at the disc opening another opportunity for now flux to score and maintain their lead as they push it ahead by an additional two points at eight to six one minute and 18 seconds remaining for these two teams as well flux had to look to put up a good defense here obviously not going to have the disc in their own hands but this kind of scoreline you're not going to feel confident with if you're Flux. You're not going to feel confident in this situation like we saw some teams just a few days ago like to bait out the time. They like to stall as long as possible to force the enemy team to go for you. Let's see, backlash. A three-pointer could actually put them in the lead. However, the way Flux have been playing, super defensive. I don't think they're actually going to give up an opportunity for that to happen. 
Watch him prove me wrong right here. So. <laughs> Torrin's got the pickup there, and it was originally sent out, but unfortunately bounced off the wall, so bounces back towards him relatively quickly. Niovic now gets the pickup, sends it flying to the other side. These have been the opportunities that have allowed for Flux to easily score, mainly because of their own launch control, and we see another example of that right there, as I think they get it just outside of the three-point bubble, giving them the opportunity to score three points, pushing their score up to 11 now with under a minute remaining. It's funny because, you know, Niovic, he's had a, a rough time, I think, in Echo Arena. He was at the invitation that we had back in June, July, July, right? Just July. Yeah. I keep saying June. Um, that was onward. Um, but in July and his team, um, well, they were like seated last for Europe and they actually did not do successful at all. Um, so this is kind of his uh, opportunity to, to really start to step up here with his team. Especially in this, in this, this is basically your last chance to qualify for OC5. Everyone wants to go to San Jose to play in the stage and potentially upset Eclipse. And let's say the start has happened. 45 seconds left to go. Pass it backwards. The Sundance, good catch by him too, because that could have been a lot of control lost for them. Now moving forward a little bit, Torn's going to get the pickup. He's got Benzula to his left, but he tries to go directly in himself, and it works as well off the back diamond and into the goal to score three points for Backlash. Putting them only another two-pointer away from closing the gap, potentially taking us to overtime. But the problem, they only have about 34 seconds to get that done, and Flux are now going to start out with possession. So here's the question. Do you take the disc and hold it defensively near your own goal? Or do you get aggressive with it and try to make them come to you? All you need to do is just spread out. Just don't mess up your passes if your team Flux, and you've got map one or round one under your belts. I think they're going to assume Backlash is going to shoot across the arena, and that's actually not entirely what they do. It's only number 78, Sundance, uh, that's going to try to go that aggressively. So Flux were smart to wait a second here, because now they can try to control the momentum a bit better. Like you were saying, all they have to do is waste time at this point. There's not necessarily a need for them to score another goal. So if they can keep it on this side of the arena, they've basically won less than 15 seconds now. Backlash are only going to have really one opportunity to make a run at goal. It doesn't start that well. Loose disc, torn, retrieves, but it's sent back into Mr. Scottish Guy's hands. Not released, though. Picked up again by Backlash, but once more, it's being interfered with far too much. Flux has one final goodbye send as they take it back the other way. And with that, maintain their two-point advantage as the clock goes down to zero, giving Flux the opening round and as well a one to nothing lead in the series. Kind of got to wonder what happened in the beginning. If those initial two three-pointers didn't happen for Flux, that could have been an entirely different game. I don't know what was going on in, in the beginning that allowed them to have that happen, but they obviously came together as the time went on. Um, I still think this could potentially go the three the three rounds, though. Especially with how close, like, four to five of those minutes were. It was, like you said, it was just the opening two goals. First 40 seconds, and after that, mm -hmm. it was a completely different game. Yeah, completely changed. I don't know if their opponents just were a little cold and they needed some time to warm up or something like that, but they certainly woke up, and now they're going to have to keep that consistency going throughout what could be the next two rounds here. And we're going to be jumping into that second round in just a second, guys, so do stick with us. So we're not going to break. We're going to be diving right back into the next round here in just a second. I would laugh so hard if we actually were going to break right now. Just like, blue, no, no, blue, we're actually going issue. to break. Don't say that. There yeah. we go. See, there we go. We're into this. I'm not a liar. We're no, right no, back in the game. <laughs> well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, into our second round here of our first best of three of the day. We still have four more EU matches to come up. Initial joust goes through. It looks like it's going to go the way here of Backlash as they do have a man advantage for the push. The Daisy Chain trying to come in from the backside was interrupted for a, a bit of time here, but Mr. Scottish Guy gets a great interception with the clear. And they're gonna get here in time to most likely pick this up and go for a score or score and Niovic will be able to get it just barely too because they had an opponent in hot pursuit. So it seems like the main issue here for Backlash is just not letting Flux get a hard clear. If Flux ever sends it to the other side and Backlash does not have someone uh, either floating like just past the force field among these islands ready to defend or doesn't get together a slingshot very quickly, it seems like Team Flux is going to win the race back to that goal every single time and nearly every single time score a goal because of that. So Backlash has to try and find a way to stop this from happening. They were pretty good, I'll say, uh, in the later moments of the previous round of actually just keeping the disc on the other side of the arena, but the few times it got away from them was those few goals that allowed for Team Flux to get an advantage that would eventually win them the first round. So they backlash, they still have to find a more permanent solution, I guess, to these these aggressive clears, whether it's increasing their own speed on launch or something else. We are going to see them make another pa nice pass routine. This is what was giving them so many points. They're going to move in. This time, though, it's interrupted by Flux. However, we could still see Banzula retrieve it, but no, it's going to be sent out by Flux. I mean, to your point of what you were talking about, Sundance was like the real MVP in the last round because of the amount of interceptions he had. Uh, he had like two in a row that netted them another four points to actually close that distance between them and Team Flux. And I would assume help up their motivation back and the morale back up um, for, the, for the match. 
if he didn't actually pull those off, I don't know what would have happened for Backlash, to be fair. Well, we almost see Flux score a very nice three-pointer right there, but thankfully the force field saves the day for them, but they still maintain possession. Cyanister now going to be moving in, and he gets close to slam in another goal here for Flux. Four to nothing in their favorite, starting out nearly the same exact way our first round did. It's just two-pointers instead of three-pointers. That will be the way they open things up. You're really, you're really pushing the slam dunks today. Try to try to I'm get your sports dunk, terms just down. Saying slam, you know, it's a high-speed punch that he goes for to loosen the disc, so... <laughs> Bam! Just, you know, you get the... That, Punch that, it in there. That's Emerald. What? That's Emerald, the chef. He says, bam. How oh, does he? Bam. And then well, it's John Madden does the boom. I'll wait for the lawsuit letter in the mail. I would, I'm going to actually send a clip of this to him. <laughs> just to have I a literally just said, happen. bam. <laughs> I had no clue. It's Emerald copyrighted, said. actually. Is it? Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. It's not. It's not. <laughs> you can't copyright a word, can you? React. React? Yeah. That's a, that's a copyrighted word? Those YouTubers copyrighted it, apparently. Really? Yeah. Because like, like a, a reaction video? Over it, like, or like, years, yeah. or like PewDiePie reacts to... Yeah, that was the context of the, oh the copyright. <laughs> I don't know if they actually got it or not. Of course they, tried they wouldn't have. Are you kidding me? That better not be a thing. I feel like they got it, I would. I would have fair, so fair, much fair, less faith of huma in humanity if that actually like got through court. It's like, you're right. You're right, PewDiePie. You're the one that should have full ownership of that word. There actually were, I, I know what you're talking about though. There are a couple of other words um, that were like taken to court to take uh, control of, to refer to like certain types of videos. Anyways, that doesn't matter right now because Team Flux are up four to two. I'm so tilted now if that actually happened. I'm gonna have to look this up in the break. <laughs> I just sent you on, oh my Lord. on a number now, didn't I? <laughs> what kind of ego do you have to have to think that you can copyright a word in the English language? It's, it's more money and than ego, And what kind ego, of ground do you think you have to be able to do that? Like you're That's spending ego. so much yeah. on a lawyer. Oh, God. I'm so annoyed. Why'd you tell me this? I'm Taking I'm it back to Echo Arena for a moment here. We've got Team Flux getting very close to another two-pointer. Seems like it's just barely a miss, though, as it does bounce off of the rim of the goal, allowing for another clear to come from Backlash. And also a much better slingshot. The problem is they send it the wrong way. The disc is not cleanly picked up. That's going to give time for Flux to get back into the action here now as well. They do it, but it doesn't matter. Sundance just has a perfect accuracy on his goal attempt right there and scores once more for Backlash. Now tie things up at four to four. All right, so all tied up here. Now Team Flux did have control of the disc. Backlash finally on, back on the board, more importantly. It will tie things up in a much earlier time uh, than the last round. But Team Flux have looked generally better on the attacks, I'd say. At least on the breakaways. Maybe I should say that. On the breakaways, they've looked better. On the attacks, Backlash has been doing a really good job, but that's just been pretty much coined up to their good defense um, that they've been able to, to do with the interceptions on the other side of the arena for Team Flux. Bit of a slower lead up at the start of the round here for Flux, and actually a pretty big mistake. Cyanister misses the pass, and it's now going to be a loose disc. Picked up by Backlash, too. Banzula gets it. Quick transfer over to Torn, who's going to hold it at midfield right now. He's being chased, so he has to release it. Over to Sundance once again, who's going to try to pass it to Banzula, but it's a miss, so more than likely, yeah, we're going to have Mr. Scottish Guy pick it up. He's surrounded by both his teammates. Gonna try to go for a clear. He's gonna let the other two get forward a bit, but oh, the double punch there from Sundance stops those plans. And Flux just releases it to the midfield. More to get rid of it than anything else here. Way well, he was dancing around the island too it was really well done. It's just unfortunate both his teammates were stunned up here. They weren't able to get a proper clear. Pass comes in, and the shot as well by Banzula. And Team Flux being out of position another time here. Two minutes left to go. There's still obviously a lot of time left on the board. But Backlash have been trying to do a really good job here. I think it's not even necessarily like an amazing individual plays right now. It's just they're taking advantage of the mistakes Flux are making. Yeah, there's good timing basically right there from Banzillo to secure that goal. Just had to wait for the goalie to over, to kind of overcommit to the defense and try to punch him. And as soon as he did that, he could have a much more open window to secure the goal. And that's exactly what he did. Waited for the goalie to jump at him and just sent it right in. So that's the six now scored for Backlash. Well into the lead, but still it's delicate. They've got to keep pushing for at least one or two more goals here before they can relax and play entirely on defense as Flux is immediately going to be coming for a rescore and themselves. Sundance. But yeah, Sundance hiding beneath that side tunnel there. Intercepts it. Takes possession on his own regard. Well, now Torrin's going to have the disc. Tries to pass it off. Does actually get it over to Sundance. But he's going the wrong direction here. He needs to move the other side of the arena, not towards his own goal. We'll try to go for a pass off to Benzula, who will finally be able to pick up a disc. Now the potential push coming through. A good interception again out of Mr. Scottish Guy. Able to push in at the right time. And he gets a full clear to the other side. Now it comes down to who can get back the quickest. Looks like it will be Backlash's favor for now. But the punch comes in. Another punch followed up here. And now Torn, disc in hand, should ideally be able to get a clear, if anything. So Torn having possession. Just a slow float right now towards midfield. So there is a group of two assigned there from Flux. 
number 97 and 21 that are stacked on top of each other right now. It's Scottish guy and Cyanister. They managed to make it through them, but they've got to be careful because they can jump onto them pretty quickly too, as you just saw there with Mr. Scottish guy's speed. An attempt, it seems, at goal bounces directly off the force field, although it could have been a nice angle to try and transfer this over to another teammate. It's got to be pushed forward regardless. Currently in the hands of Torin. Is he going to go for the goal himself? He's got a teammate nearby, but he doesn't need him. Swoops around that last island before securing another two-pointer and doubling the lead that they have over Flux at eight to four. Still not really comfortable lead though, Team Flux. You get a three-pointer and you're within winning distance off of that. And it's, even just a two-pointer, just a one goal difference between the two would be a major win for Flux. But the problem is time is now a major factor here. 47 seconds left to go. Flux is going to have control of the disc, but they need to clean to get across. They need to stop having these, or allowing Sundance to, to pull off these interceptions. Their, their passing isn't clean at all. Their movement might be a little bit superior than Backlash, but passing is what it's all about right now. And they will get a pass off to Nilevic. And well, as I just talked about passing and how awkward it's been, Sundance is going to get another interception. They just give it up as well. They're not even attempting to take possession of the loose disc because they know Sundance is going to be able to <laughs> grab just it. just hold it now. That's exactly what he's doing. Like He's just waiting for the push to come at him from Nilevic himself. Quickly just passes back and forth. A little bit of a monkey in the middle game can't hurt at this point, or monkey in the middle of the triangle, I guess, is a more appropriate word for it. As we come down to the last 20 seconds, Backlash has now made two attempts at goal, both of which have dinged on the rim. Unsuccessful attempts, but it doesn't matter as long as they hold on a lead. That's all they need. Flux, though, is going to be able to escape with it. They'll get a quick pass over to Nilevic. This would only be one goal, though, and unfortunately for them, Backlash is already waiting by the time they get close to that goal. And with less than five seconds, it's nigh impossible now. So Backlash will take control of the second round of this series, tying us up now at one to one. I actually am amazed that we saw Backlash try to go for a shot. Like, I mean... More playing with them, I think. I don't even know if they were actually trying well, to hit like You go for a point. shot, yeah, you make it, you put yourself like even further ahead, but you just literally could have passed around the outside the entire time because they had to score two goals no matter what and then just bought time. They have to come to you and all three were sitting in the goal. Like, I get it. They still won the end, but, you know, if you see a team like Eclipse... Or if you're against a team like Eclipse, they'll definitely take advantage of that every single day of the week. You can't afford to make mistakes like that happen. I think at the point they were at, they were in like pretty safe position to try because it I was down so. to like 20 seconds or so when I they started so. doing that. So I think that they were they were feeling pretty confident that that wasn't going to backfire. I mean, even if it did, one goal and then they just have to hold for what it would have been like 10, five seconds at most. So like he went backwards, 10, five seconds <laughs> instead of like five, 10 seconds. I mean, actually, technically, that was I like right. Do, I like to do things differently. You too. The, the, the new blue just likes to be his own man. <laughs> I don't conform to the means of society. <laughs> With your button-up shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Your, your iPhone or your Apple Watch. That is true. <laughs> I'm big on uh, capitalism. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's like form, but I have everything that, like, took everyone else in the world has. way too long to think of the word capitalism, by the way. I don't know why it took me that long to remember that. There we go. Push comes in. Actually, has a good clear. And I think Team Flux might have a chance for a shot. But look how far back Cyanister uh, is. He's literally in his own goal. And it's, I mean, you could afford to push up because you can be like an anchor for your team. It's like a pivot point. But now it's a good thing he is in the goal because the back shot comes in. Off the backwards, not going to land. The potential clear going to come back out of Flux. So I'm, I'm just like questioning more and more against Flux as this, as this game goes on. Well, now they're just trying, now it seemed like in that case, they were trying to overcompensate a little bit from the aggression that we were seeing for Backlash. Because Backlash really woke up in the second round and all of a sudden we're like infinitely better at boosting and just getting slingshots going, uh, which was really just a non-issue for Flux in the first round there. So props to Backlash for bringing this out all of a sudden here. But now it's put Flux into a terrible position where they can't, unfortunately, seem to find a whole lot of counters to what Backlash is doing. Backlash is playing this nice, steady, slow game uh, that speeds up when they need it to, which right now would have been a great time to do it. But they're still going to play a bit cautiously here. Pass over to Sundance is going to send it directly into the goal. You let him get a three-pointer. And there you go. Yeah. How does he get a three-pointer when there's one in the goal? He's got that He's got that reticle on his arm. He's good at aiming at the disc, I, I suppose. Should, dude, uh, the whole point of having someone on the goal is to deny the three-point. Yeah, I think... I don't know, I, uh, I think the way that that worked out was just a bit of an odd position. So he got a little bit lucky that he was able to sneak that through. But still, that's, that's, a, that's a bad mark on the goalie there for not being able to stop a shot like that. Oh, let's see if they can come back from it, though. They will have control of the disc, obviously, in this next volley, so not a major deal for them. But then again, double elimination bracket. You don't want to go to the lower bracket right off the bat in the very first round. So Mr. Scottish guy playing that one smart. Baits in a player. I think that was Torn. Let's get the pass over to Cyanister. Now he can push in. Again, they're baiting another player. A good pass comes in as well over to Nalvik, but the pass hasn't been caught, unfortunately. There was an easy opportunity for a score there, too, because there's no one defending the goal. But Fox, again, the passing has just not been on point this game. 
So Nance has to pick it up again with a lead. There's no reason to really not waste time given the situation. It's a bit dangerous given how close the lead is, but they can afford to do it. And it has been their go-to strategy here when they've been in a leading position. So it's going to make sense for it to continue as now the pass has been sent over to Torin, who then passes it up to Banzula. Banzula actually just goes right for the three-pointer, even at only about the halfway mark here instead of the blue territory. But thankfully, Niovic for Flux is going to be there. He intercepts, and now Flux are making their own run. Although it is going to get a little bit arduous now that they've set the disc loose. Works out the transition itself into Mr. Scottish Guy's hands, but immediately it's stolen directly out of Scottish Guy's hands, taken by Sundance, and sent flying back the other way. I really feel like Sundance is carrying backlash at this rate. Oh, look at that. Even gets the goal, too. Five to zero. Two minutes and 36 seconds left. Sundance's defense has just been stellar throughout bet, the entire series. I would bet you there's very little warning on that from Flux's, uh, or excuse me, from Mr. Scottish Guy's other teammates there, too. Because Scottish Guy was ready to just easily grab that and send it back to midfield. But it looks like backlash got together that slingshot so quickly and actually got in the face of Mr. Scottish Guy so fast that neither Sianister or Nalvik would have been able to calm that properly. So props to backlash, making some very, very striking plays here to give them a lead and turn the series around and complete the reverse sweep. Well, I want to give a shout out to everyone in chat. I see uh, VR jerseys back in there, Aphantera's in there. Nada's in there, even, uh, was it Smumma Ding Dong's in there as well? <laughs> Good to have you back. What was the other one the other day? Gob. Oh, yeah. I was just going to call him Gob. Yeah, we don't have to say the rest of that. Uh, two minutes and 15 seconds left to go. Backlash have a fantastic lead, their biggest lead they've had, I feel like, uh, throughout this entire series. Now Vic and Co. need to pull off a score, and they need to do it soon. Comes in, and Sanister comes up big for the team. Gets two points on the board. Good pass, good shot. And that's exactly what Flux need to do to get back into this. Just to call some more attention to the little details that we're seeing here. That's big props to, I believe it was Niovic that scored that goal. Correct me if I'm wrong. A Cyanister. Oh, Cyanister, yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. So, uh, big props to Cyanister because that was some really good that was some really good use of his offhand when he has the disc because he was actually kind of swinging around the island with his hand, but he was keeping control, like constantly re-grabbing it to stop himself to make sure he didn't float too far to put himself in like a pixel-perfect position to actually go in and make that shot right there. So that's some good skill because more than likely, he's not actually looking at what's behind him. He's just grabbing at nothing and hoping he's actually still on the island yes, there. Uh, uh, the unfortunate part is you can't like feel it there too to have yeah. that like mental knowledge of or the mental understanding of like you're still there. So really good awareness out of him just to realize where he is with what's around him to realize he's still grabbing onto it. Punch comes in out of Torn tries to get aggressive here. Sanister gonna actually lose control. The disc I look like for a second, but we'll have it back. His hands passes it back to Nalvik. Yeah, it's great. You have control of the disc, but you need to get to the other side of the map here and look at this aggressive defense at a backlash. It's really holding Flux back, but a good pass comes in back to Nile. And he's finally able to get past the halfway point. And look at this, Mr. Scottish guy all alone, and he oh! misses the three. Oh, that's unfortunate. You hate to see that. And they're going to spend another five to 10 seconds here trying to regroup and reposition. They can't afford to waste that much time at this point. They've got to move in. They do secure it, but it's been translated down to a two-pointer now, where it would have been an easy three-pointer before to allow them to tie things up at five to five. Now, Backlash still the lead at five to four, and they've got possession, so they can make a run for another two-pointer, which will nearly put them completely out of grasp of Flux tying it up, unless they too could score a three-pointer in the small amount of time remaining in this series. And at 20 to go. Pressure is starting to really build for Flux here again. Double elimination bracket. You don't want to go into the loser bracket right off the bat, especially with the, the teams that you have to meet later on today. Now backlash with control. Let's see. Sundance. Action as the quarterback now for his team. Again, yeah, I like how he's pushing up. Like he doesn't need to pass it just yet. He can bait in a defender, then go for the pass, but now it gets intercepted, it gets stolen away. The shot from downtown comes in and it's gonna land. Sanister, what is that? He gets a three-pointer and he gets them in the lead, most importantly. Perfect shot going off the backboard right there as well. So some ace accuracy coming from Team Flux now in this last minute or so of the game to bring them back into the fold. And now with that three-pointer, push them ahead. Backlash, now the pressure's on them. With one minute remaining, they have to score again. And if they want the lead, they need at least a three-pointer. I think right now they're just trying to tie things up here, potentially get it over to overtime. It's going to be tough, though. But I still like the way that Backlash were attacking. Just that, again, that pass didn't need to come in so early. This was a really good defense from Flux there. Again, the pass comes in. It means it's stolen away. You don't need to do that. You don't need to clear it so quickly. And now Flux are taking advantage of this. And Backlash trying to play a little bit too. This is going to be a two-on-one. Sanister again with the disc. And he gets another goal on the board. And now Flux are up nine to five. And things are just slipping away for Backlash. And then even did get his aggressive stun off when he jumped out of goal. But it was just a second too late. The disc was already loosened from his opponent's hands and set into the goal. Like you said before, further increasing the gap now between themselves and Flux. 
any, if even if anything else is scored by Flux here, it's pretty much going to be nigh impossible, especially, of course, with the degrading time that's still remaining here. It is possible for Backlash to score these two goals and tie it up at 9-9. Nine to nine. It's just going to be very, very difficult to see. And if they waste, I'll say, more than 10, 15 seconds, then that opportunity is completely gone. These have to be very quick goals from Backlash, and we need to see them lining up for it pretty much immediately. See, I don't understand any of those passes in the beginning. Maybe I'm just, I just don't understand the game enough. But those... it's, more, it's more because of the impending threat of those but two. But they didn't come. They, they, they were literally sitting back at the island and you're passing and potentially going to make a mistake and miss the pass, which ended up happening anyways. Yeah. And, and now yeah. with 30 seconds left to go, they're down four points. They need to score within like the next five seconds and it's going to be intercepted yet again. Cyanister comes up big another time. And at this point, the guys from Backlash, of course, they aren't going to be able to put up much of a fight. As not only is the gap going to be widened once more, but even if they stopped it, like I said, they would have only had now 25 seconds to start reversing it the other way. So Flux seems to have Backlash's number, and they are just 26 seconds now, or 25 seconds actually, if we round it down. Uh, 25 seconds away from taking this third round and pushing themselves forward further into the upper bracket and sending Backlash down. And they would play against the winner of Team Gravity up against Smash Dash, so it's going to be another tough match for these teams no matter what or no matter who wins. With six points in 25 seconds, you need two three-pointers to tie things up, and they've been unable to do it so far. As long as there's someone in the goal, which Mr. Scottish guy will be, the chance of hitting a three is just, it's just not possible. It shouldn't be. It has happened once today, to be fair. <laughs> Flux is going to just play around with them a little bit after they get back possession. They send it the other way here, and while it is now going to be picked up, actually, never mind, it's not even immediately picked up by Torn. But yes, time has run out. Team Flux, ladies and gentlemen, do recover after initially stomping, it seems like, in the first round there, at least the first minute of the first round, dropping the second round quite convincingly. They rebound very well here in the third round to take it two to one overall and move themselves Terms. forward. Got it. What? Rebound. It's just a general definition. You're on fire more. today. You just yeah. are on fire. I got a host, so I gotta be, you know. I don't look. Uh, please, please don't. Please. I gotta be. I couldn't think Can of a word again. Can you floss for us, Blue? What's up? Can you floss for no, us? No, I'm not doing that. Mm. That's that's a bit too far. That requires actual skill to like mm. do that. Okay. So. Well, you know, it's a shame because I can down. do it, and it's good to know you can't. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, do stick with us. We have plenty more Echo Arena action coming up here today, starting with our next match, which is going to be a lower bracket matchup here. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with the next matchup here for the European qualifiers leading up to OC5.